I know Australians are angry, distressed and seeking answers about the highly sensitive and deeply personal information that is being released by criminals. Which is a real reminder uh, that we live in a world in which uh, cyber crime and cyber security issues are front and centre. The criminals stole the username and password of someone with preferred access, high level system access. You just wonder, it's like they're paying lip service to data security. In this video, I'm gonna talk about a data breach from 2022 where the organisation that was compromised showed a huge disregard for security and that led to millions of people's sensitive personal health data being compromised. As always, I'm going to talk about what happened, what we can learn from this and also give you some actionable advice about how you can prevent it happening at your organisation. And when you get into the detail of this breach, I'm not usually one to victim blame, but we have to do better as an industry to protect the data that we're entrusted with by our customers or, or other organisations that we work with. Some of the, the lack of basic security in this organisation is quite startling. And I'll explain later why we have such rich information about what happened, but it's quite rare in security events and cyber attacks that we get the detail of what happened in the breach and what we can learn from it. So this is quite a privileged position to be in where we can see exactly what the attacker did. I am of course talking about the 2022 compromise of the Australian medical insurance company Medibank. Now this came back into the news just this week because the Australian privacy regulator is suing Medibank for basically malpractice and for not protecting their customers' information appropriately and they've just released effectively a dossier of, of why they're suing them and some of the failings they've identified and it is quite spicy. So if you're not familiar with Medibank, they're a large private health insurer in Australia. They've got about 3,200 employees. And last year they made around $727 million in pre-tax profits. And before getting into the detail, I just want to give a quick shout out to the CEO over at Sidearm, Vaughan Shanks, who posted a really good uh, note on LinkedIn about this breach and, and what happened and what had been identified as part of this um, article that's been released by the Australian regulator. So that's a really good post. Thanks for that, Vaughan. And I appreciate it. Hopefully I'm not copying anything you said, although I think we'd probably agree on, on lots of things to do with this particular cyber attack. So what happened? So back in 2022, Medibank were compromised by a criminal group who were able to steal medical data for their 9.7 million customers. They then attempted to extort Medibank, so effectively take the data, threatened to leak it online unless Medibank paid an extortion or a ransom. And in this case, some of the data was leaked on the dark web. And the story begins back in August 2022 when a contractor working in the IT department, or it sounds like the IT department from what the report says, was using a couple of credentials, um, one of which was a user account, the other one sounds like a more privileged account, and they were using them in a Chrome browser. Now, this particular Chrome browser was logged in with that individual's personal Chrome account. Now, we've seen this before. It happened with an Okta breach back in 2023, and I've talked about that previously. But when you do that, it usually means that those credentials are synced to that individual's account, and then also synced to the other machines that they might be logged into. So although they're being used within our nice, sometimes nice sort of enterprise cocoon of security goodness, these super sensitive credentials and then being stored in the cloud somewhere and then dumped on someone else's machine. And that is where this problem really gets interesting. These credentials were then stolen from that contractor's personal machine and they gave an attacker access to both Medibank's exchange server, uh, potentially via something like Outlook for Web Application or OWA, and also access into their VPN. And just as I was starting to record this video, I saw a LinkedIn post from the company Hudson Rock that track info stealers, which if you're not familiar with is malware that effectively just steals information like credentials from machines. And they've identified that there was credentials for Medibank available on info stealers around the time of this breach. And they do sort of match up with what is talked about in this report. They're a really interesting finding. That's not confirmed yet. It may just be a coincidence. 
um, but interesting nonetheless. And if you're interested in info stealers, my friend Gary Ruddles done a really good deep dive video that talks all about what they are and how they work. And I really recommend checking that out. But back to our story here. So we've now got an attacker with a user account and an admin account for Medibank. And it sounds like these credentials were used successfully to log into their exchange server and also their VPN without any kind of multi-factor authentication. I'll come back to that in a minute, but I find that just startling. Even in 2022, it was only a couple of years ago, that that was possible. So we've now got the attacker on the Medibank network using the VPN. And because they're using legitimate credentials, it's really difficult for security to identify that they're an attacker because they're using a legitimate identity. Well, luckily, some of the activity they then started doing was detected by Medibank's endpoint detection and response tooling, that's EDR. Now I've written about EDR before and I've got a video talking about what EDR is and how it works. I'll share links to those in the description for this video, but it's fantastic tooling. It's great that I had it in place, but unfortunately, although it alerted, nobody looked at the alerts or, or they did and they didn't understand what they were. So although the attacker was present, the EDR was finding them. Nobody really knew what was going on and they didn't respond to those alerts. The attacker was then able to move around the Medibank network. The report doesn't go into detail of how that happened, but if I were guessing, they would have probably compromised more accounts, maybe used protocols like remote desktop to move around. It makes it really easy in a Windows environment. And they were able to compromise some of the customer databases that Medibank used and exfiltrate about 520 gigabytes of highly sensitive medical data. And all that began in August, 2022. And it wasn't until October, 2022. So the attacker was active in their environment, unhindered for that time that and a security alert finally fired. Medibank investigated that. They thought something was suspicious. They called in an instant response firm and this whole story started to come out about what had happened. But also in mid-October, the attackers, they had everything they needed. They then got in contact with Medibank and began the extortion process by showing them the data that they had and threatening to leak it online. So what can we learn from this? Well, firstly, and I've talked about it on videos, I've talked about it on the Purple Team Dialogues podcast, MFA, multi-factor authentication, on anything that's on your perimeter is really, really important, particularly for remote access. It's probably the combination of the worst things. You've got compromised credentials, no MFA, and then a VPN that someone can use to get into the organization. All of that combined makes for a really, really bad time. And if you talk to any pen tester, purple teamer, red teamer, even a, a cyber criminal, I've no doubt they'll say that MFA is one of their worst enemies. There are ways around it and there's ways through it. But if they hit MFA, it makes their job super hard, even if they've got legitimate credentials. The next thing that, that struck me was that lack of investigation for those EDR alerts. So there's some amazing security technologies out there and lots of us buy them and, and we deploy them. But in that process, you have to think about operationalization. How are these things going to alert? Where do those alerts go? Do the folks reviewing them have a playbook? Do they know what they're looking for? Have we got cover if people are on holiday to review them? It's really easy for things to slip between the cracks. And in this case, as it did, we can see the consequences. And I think it's one of the tragedies in this whole story that early on in the breach, even though they didn't have that MFA, but early on EDR was detecting the attacker had Medibank being able to act at that point, bring an instant response, eradicate that attacker, this breach may never have ever happened. And possibly that would have been the wake up call for them to fix all of these security issues that they had. The report also talks about how historically Medibank had been warned about the state of their security and there's lots of evidence that they've been told to improve. So another takeaway I, I see from this is that if you're told your security is a certain maturity level and you want it to be higher, you have to act on that. As soon as something like that is in writing, First of all, it's disclosable if you're ever sued, um, like in this case, but it's obviously a really powerful warning signal that you aren't in the position you want to be and you have to improve that. It also sounds like Medibank weren't doing a great job at privilege management. So these privileged accounts, the ones that let you move around the network really, really easy and access sensitive services. Generally, we want least privilege, so we want as few of these as possible. And ideally, we want them protected in a privileged access management solution, a PAM tool, which will control them. It will rotate them on a regular basis. It will guard them with MFA. It will do a bunch of other clever stuff that means for an attacker, it's, it's much harder to get in and leverage privileged accounts, but as a bare minimum, 
least privilege is really, really important and is our friend when it comes to reducing that attack surface. Another takeaway was the use of policies and standards within a big organisation like Medibank. In one of the annexes to the report, it lists 30 plus standards, policies and frameworks that the organisation had relating to security. And some of them were quite dated, others were more recent. But it does make you think they had all of these things in existence. They had what seemed like quite a rich policy suite just from an initial glance. Clearly though, there's a huge disconnect between the written policies that they had and the actual security that they were doing. So if you want to go down the route of, of governance and risk and compliance and having policies and standards, a really important area of security, it's got to be balanced against actually doing real security, actually practicing what's written in those policies and standards. And then my final point, going all the way back to the start of this breach, is that use of, it's almost personal IT, where that individual was on what sounds like Medibank corporate IT kit or corporate IT kit from the organization that they were working for, but they were using these sensitive credentials that were synced up to Google and then pushed onto other machines as well. That's when they were stolen. There's some relatively straightforward ways we can fix that. There's group policy objects in the Windows world where we can roll out to stop people being able to use built-in password managers in browsers. Obviously, it does mean you need to provide them with an alternative password manager, I would suggest. But I'm fairly confident we're going to see more and more of these types of attacks. The recent breaches of Snowflake instances that I have a, another video which I, I talk about those on, they're also related to info stealers where we think an attacker has been able to just steal credentials from people's machines, maybe corporate, more likely personal, I would suggest, and then use those credentials, no MFA, and they're straight in to steal data. I hope you found this video interesting. It's been a fascinating uh, breach to read about and get into the detail and really under the skin of what was happening at Medibank that allowed this to take place. And I think it's a really valuable warning to lots of organisations who are probably in similar positions that you need to be better at this and also if you're not it may come out in public and that's going to be damaging for reputations. There'll be financial fines, all kinds of massive inconvenience but most importantly in this case we're talking about people's medical data that has been stolen and some of it is super sensitive and that's sad to see. So some great lessons for us at security. Highly recommend reading the actual report. I'll put a link to it in the show notes for this video. But I hope you found this interesting and I'll see you again soon.